Hello, everyone. My name is Jake Johnstone, and welcome to the Grit with Wisdom podcast. This is the podcast that aims to delve deep into the inner psyche and the mindsets of mountain bikers from all aspects of our sport in order to help you understand some of the tools, the tactics, and what it takes to push the boundaries of our sport from a mental and emotional perspective. So, today's guest is Emma Olofsson. Emma is an absolute shredder who hails from Sweden originally and has spent the past five years or so traveling between Europe and her adopted hometown of Queenstown, New Zealand, all in the pursuit of good times on two wheels. I met Emma at the bike park when I was traveling New Zealand a few years back, and it's been awesome following along online since and seen so much progression from her in a relatively short period of time. As a rider who has really dove headfirst all into the sport, she's been involved in all sorts of cool fo- uh, filming projects, races, female progression camps, which we explore all while picking apart the mindset that makes all of this possible. With no further ado, guys, let's give a warm welcome to Emma Olofsson. Enjoy. Okay, Emma, welcome to the show. It's great to have you on today. How are you? Thank you. I'm good, thanks. Thanks for having me. No, no problem at all. I'm super pumped to kind of have a bit of a catch up and talk lots about your ride in. Um, How's your day been so far? Uh, Pretty good. I just uh, came home from work. It's been a pretty hectic day at work, Sunday, Uh, and I work in a bar. So people come in and get breakfast and Bloody Marys. Okay, fantastic. I know last time I seen you down in Queenstown years ago, you were flipping burgers at Ferg Burger. Yeah. (laughs) So... I still work at Ferg, but they opened a bar oh, like right. two years ago. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately. I'm <laughs> <laughs> so I've been on a sponsored visa for like, uh, I don't know, four, four years now, four and a half okay. years. Yeah. But okay. um, yeah, I should be able to get residency soon, which is cool because then I can work with whatever I want to. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering if you're working within the bike industry yet, because I'm sure you will one day. Is that kind of the dream? Uh, yeah, I'm going to apply in like two weeks I can apply for residency and when I get it I will quit oh, fantastic and well best of luck I yeah I would like to work with something with bikes I'm not sure what but um, yeah we'll see yeah well that's awesome that's a cool thing about the bike industry these days there's so many different ways you can take it um to kind yeah, of work exactly. in and around that industry so that's right um cool for those that don't know you i'd love to kind of talk a little bit about your background um you're from sweden i'm curious yeah. what was it like growing up in sweden and when did you start riding bikes um well i have never been a big fan of sweden if i'm gonna be honest okay. like since i was a kid like i like sweden but i've never wanted to live there and i'm from a really small place like in the middle of nowhere so honestly i was pretty bored growing up I remember always telling my mom like every week and I'm like, I'm bored, I'm bored. And she's like, oh, you should just enjoy it, like relaxing. You know, like I don't like relaxing. So um, ever since I was a kid, I knew that I wanted to move somewhere else. And then, um, yeah, when I, when I was 21, maybe I lived in Mom and I worked as a makeup artist. Um, And I'm, I'd worked there for like a year and a half and I was getting pretty bored of it. I'm, I get bored easily. (laughs) So, um, yeah, I went to Australia for a bit, like for eight months and I was a little bit bored there too. Um, and that's when I moved to New Zealand. Um, Fantastic. So what, what inspired that move to New Zealand? Uh, I, I tried mountain biking a few times in Sweden. So that must've been nine, eight, eight years ago, maybe I tried it like, I don't know 10 times maybe with my brother and I thought it was so fun awesome. and I heard that it was really good mountain biking in Queenstown and so since I was already in Australia I thought because Queenstown's so close I, I wanted to go there and check it out and I'm very happy that I did because yeah, now I'm right. living my best life sounds like you picked the perfect place too because uh, anyone that's been to Queenstown knows that you're never bored in Queenstown there's like no. no shortage no matter what the season there's always something fun to do right yeah exactly so good place for a restless person because yeah <laughs> too much fun stuff too no that's fantastic now i know recently um you were involved in some racing down there in queenstown um the, was it the ride more downhill series yeah yeah, yeah so was um 
so fun like it's just such a like chill race and it was really busy like um I guess everyone's just getting like so many people are into mountain biking now and it's just like such a chill vibe those races so everyone wants to do them doesn't matter if you're like a racer or not so yeah it was really fun they do I think it's like five races uh every summer that's fantastic so it's a bit of like a community local race is it right yeah yeah so it's a fundraiser for the mountain bike club um so it costs like 40 bucks to enter and all of it goes to the uh to the bike club and then so that goes to like trail maintenance or thing they're trying to save up for a new airbag and just everything that involves mountain biking wow that's awesome yeah lots of cool stuff happening down there and when you're kind of riding in that environment those kind of fun um weekly races are you racing to win or are you just racing to ride i'm just racing to be social and like have fun i don't want to i don't want to come last so if i if i come last i'd be really pissed off and i would not race (laughs) yeah so it sounds like a little bit of both yeah a little bit of both for sure (laughs) fantastic but the best of both worlds that kind of leads us into my next question i'd love to um obviously talk about the mindset side of things with you today Um, And I'm curious, do you have any key principles for operating in an optimal state of mind for mountain biking? Mm, Well, I always just like try to ride what I want to ride. Like there's just like so many different types of riding. Like you can ride like bike park or you can go for a pedal and ride like peck trails. So you can ride gore trail, like small jumps or big jumps. And so I just always think like, what do I feel like riding? And I'll go and do that because that's what I want to. Um, and if I don't feel like riding, like I won't ride. Yeah, I, that's a which really good doesn't point happen very. Up. Yeah, it doesn't happen very often. But I think because you just know so many people that ride bikes in Queenstown, so you just feel like you always have to ride. And so I do pretty much ride every day. But if I don't feel like it, I won't do it. Because then when I do it, I. I'm like in the zone. Yeah, I totally hear you. It can like can be really hard to live in a place um, like Queenstown or where I'm living here in Canada to say no to a ride, isn't there? Um, yeah. There's always someone that wants to get out. There's always something to do. Um, yeah. But I, I really like that point you bring up. You know, it's important to kind of listen to our body, listen to our minds and how we're feeling and maybe, you know, not push ourselves too hard or go out if we're not feeling it. Yeah, exactly. I love that. So you mentioned kind of lots of different disciplines within biking there um yeah. what are your main disciplines or you know what are you mainly into uh bike park, <laughs> bike park. i love riding bike park i love riding my down on the bike and it's just like so much fun and you can choose like flow or tech i like both like but definitely bike park um and i just like riding with friends like trying to make your riding look good and and then it feels good as well so yeah, awesome. that's why I wouldn't say that I'm a racer. Like, I don't care about going too fast. Obviously, I don't want to go slow, but it's more about having fun. Um, yeah, and I definitely like jumps. And like jumps. And corners. Yeah, yeah, I've been kind of seeing on your socials that you've been getting more and more into jumps and getting better and better at them. Um, yeah. Is there any anything in particular like you've been practicing or working on lately when it comes to the jumps? Mm, lately I feel like I've been like so busy and like stressed out so I haven't really prioritized uh practicing new tricks I do have a few in mind that I really want to do uh before the end of the season like I really want to learn a tuck no hander and a no foot can because last year I learned like a one foot can and I learned how to do suies and what else crank flip I learned that last year as well so I felt like I got quite a few tricks down last year and so I'd like to work on them this year as well but I think just if you ride in general like your style just improves because you just get so comfortable on your bike yeah that time on the bike kind of compounds doesn't it yeah definitely way more like bike awareness I am trying to do these tire slides because uh my boyfriend, he keeps doing them everywhere and it looks really good. And I'm like, I want to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's and, fantastic. 
And, you know, watching yeah. someone else is sometimes, you know, one of the best ways of just like realizing what's possible on a bike. And then yeah. you know, a best way of kind of getting inspired as well. I mean, like, hey, I want to do that. Yeah, exactly. And that's why yeah. it's so important to like ride with different people. Because if you just ride with the same people all the time, like, I don't know, it's hard to get inspired to do something new. But then, so it's good to just like ride with everyone. And I think that keeps it fun and also, yeah, keeps you inspired. Yeah, for sure. And that's where Queenstown's great, isn't it? Like everyone's riding that same bike park. There's lots of new people coming through all summer. Like there's never any shortage of kind of inspiration there in terms of other Yeah, riders, exactly. Right? Yeah, that's awesome. So talking about like the different disciplines there, um, how do you go about setting yourself up um, for an optimal state of mind when you're, say, riding dirt jumps? And I'm curious, does that differ when you're, say, riding a fast tech trail um, in the bike park there? Yeah, probably. I'm not really that used to dirt jumps. Like I just got my heart tail probably around a year ago. Okay. And then so I, and it's so different. Like i I'm definitely used to downhill bikes. So riding my heart tail or like my dirt jumper is really different. But then also because the jumps are smaller than mountain bike jumps, it's kind of like um takes a little bit of fear. Uh, away from those kind of jumps um for sure so yeah you're kind of approaching um say the dirt jumps a little bit differently if that's newer to you yeah i'm definitely like a little bit more i'm i guess because i'm not as confident on that bike i'm taking it a little bit easier but the vibe there is just like really good everyone's so friendly i always have the best time there so i think that really helps me want to like move on to the like next size jumps like the guys there they're like yeah yeah whenever you're ready I'll tell you in so you can definitely do it you just let me know when you want to do it and and you just follow me so I think that really like um motivates you to yeah ride the bigger jumps or whatever try something new yeah so but yeah it's, it's I think it's the same as like riding a tech trail like if I feel like riding dirt jumps I'll be in the zone there and if I feel like riding bike park, I'll be like in the zone in the bike park. But yeah, if I'm, if I actually feel like riding my downhill bike and I'm at the dirt jumps, I'm, I'm probably not going to do very well. And I'll just cruise like the easy, uh, the easy line. Yeah. Yeah. I totally hear you. Such a good approach. And you, I guess you kind of touched on it already, but what do you do? So you get to Gorge Road, you're looking at some jumps and you're just like, Hey, my head's not really in the game today. Like, what would you do then? Um, I really don't want to hurt myself. So I feel like if I'm not, if I don't really feel like it, I'm not going to push it and I'm not going to do it. Yeah. So I, I like pushing my limits, but I don't feel like it's not worth it. If I feel like my head's not there because I don't want to hurt myself. And then I'm out for like two months and I'm wasting so much time on the bike. Yeah, exactly. Um, so then I'm probably just like, gonna make the most of them. yeah, exactly. And it is time just flies and all the, like, I can't believe it's what, 13th of February today. Yeah, it's crazy, eh? Yeah, I'm like, oh my God, summer is gone. But it's not really. <laughs> um, and autumn is really good riding here as well. Yeah, for sure. Some of the best riding of the year, I reckon. Yeah, for sure. It's been really dry lately. It hasn't really rained much. I think the summer you were here, I think that was the summer that it didn't really rain. Yeah, it was really dry. I remember riding yeah. the uh, rude rock behind all of you guys. It's just like a cloud of dust yeah yeah and normally like the dirt here is really dry so it has rained a bit but yeah so that's why it's really good in autumn because it's just like better dirt I guess yeah yeah you'll be hanging out for it um so I'm curious like talking about setting goals and progressing like say from one jump um to the next bigger ones or from one trick and then adding another layer to it how do you go about kind of setting goals that are achievable yet still fun Mm. I really like goals like I always have like I'll have like a trick goal I'll have feature goals I might have like fitness goals as well so I I always write it down in a list on a list like in either in my notes in my uh, phone or I I have a lot of different notebooks (laughs) that I write in I love lists so um yeah I think I'll just it's like things that I might look at and feel like, oh yeah, 
that does scare me, but I feel like I can do it. Um, mm. So with like a feature, like it might be a big drop or whatever. Like I think there's this one rock roll drop thing in the bike park that I've never done before that I did like two weeks ago. And I was just riding the trail and then I was riding with Luis and, and Steve and they're like, no, 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 you can like easily do it. And I'm like, yeah, it's actually on my like uh, goals list. So yeah, I'll just do it now. Well, uh, Cause I guess you, when you just feel ready for it. Um, but yeah, I think there's like so many things you can, so many goals you can set. And so that there are a lot of them that are achievable. So I think if you do like a few goals, um, yeah, like a few feature goals, like doing that drop or doing that line, riding that big jump. Um, and then it just keeps it fun because you're like almost there, yeah, but it sure. still scares you, if that makes sense. Yeah, it totally makes sense. It's so cool to hear that you've got these goals across like all different aspects of the sport as well. Like you're not yeah. just trying to go fast or you're not just trying to jump bigger. Um, you've got all these different goals and, you know, it really shows in your writing too. Yeah, you've been able to kind of progress in what's been like a relatively short amount of time progressed to become like a really high level rider. Um, so it's rad kind of watching that from the outside. Um, and I love kind of what you were saying there too, about kind of setting goals that are maybe just outside of your current skill set. Like it yeah. scares you a little bit, but you know that, you know, you can probably make it work. You're not setting goals that are, you know, way up here, way out of your reach. We're not yeah. going for like, you know, the, the big dream line when you haven't even done the baby line yet or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Or like, I wouldn't be like, okay, I don't know, a uh, triple backflip is my goal. I'm like, I'm not, I'm hundred percent not there yet. So we can wait with that. Gonna wait until I get that airbag first here. Hey? Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. So on the subject of uh, jumping and progression, you were involved in a really cool camp. Um, I believe it was last year or the year before, um, the Mons Royale Future Ground Camp. Um, yeah, can you tell us a little bit about year. that one. Yeah, it was really good. It was probably like around a year ago. I think it was March last year. Or, yeah. Um, it was really good. It was about four days, I think, of riding and a lot of trampolining. So we spent like most mornings at Site Trampoline Park um, to get like air awareness. And it was really good. It was very tiring. Like my back yeah. really, really, really hurt because okay. I guess we're not used to trampolining. Yeah, I was going to ask, so was that your first time kind of on a trampoline for the purpose of mountain bike riding? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I haven't, like, done a backflip on a trampoline. Oh, I did it when I was, like, 12, and then I had an accident, and, like, I lost my front tooth, and then <laughs> I stopped doing, yeah. Um, and then I stopped doing uh, flips on trampoline after that. <laughs> and so I hadn't done it since, and I was kind of scared. But then uh, the the coaches there were really good so I think we all did like front flips and back flips on the trampoline by the end of it yeah. and I I guess the goal was kind of to do it on a bike it wasn't really but it felt like it was like a backflip camp which is yeah, pretty yeah. cool um because then we spent all winter practicing doing backflips on the airbag at site oh that's right so yes yeah, so it was kind of like a skate ramp into an airbag so this, this, yeah, the jump wasn't the best, but it was still good to like get the feeling of being upside down in the air. Yeah. Um, it's something I've never done on a bike myself. Um, yeah, and I'm and curious, like, how did it go converting it from just a trampoline with no bike to all of a sudden being on a bike, jumping onto an airbag? Was there like a, a mental barrier you had to break through there to actually flip yourself upside down? Yeah. During the future ground camp, like I think I never actually tried to do a backflip on the bike. I just like landed on my back and I'm like, okay, I'm happy doing that because yeah. it was way, way scarier to do it on a bike. Um, and I guess you could land on, um, on the ramp as well, which was a little bit scary. My head did get pretty close to the lip a few oh, times, no. but um, yeah, I never, I never hit my head. So, uh, but yeah, a few, a few of the girls got it during, uh, that camp I think um, oh, that's awesome. yeah and that was, was a just, female yeah. only progression camp right yeah so we were 10 girls doing it and I think like the best part about it was that we all got to know each other because before 
before that I didn't really know most of the girls that were riding and so I was just always running with guys and just yeah and so it was so good to get to know everyone and now we're all like really 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 good friends and I feel like it's kind of thanks to that so that was for sure like the best the best part of the camp well just to get to know all the girls yeah such a great experience and it's definitely you know a a cool incentive they've got going on there because you know yeah, females are underrepresented in our sport. It's a fact of it. Yeah. Um, so it's so cool to see, you know, camps like this allowing, allowing um, you know, red riders like yourself being able to kind of push themselves, progress and, and learn all this cool stuff. Yeah, it was really cool. And I feel like it really kicked off some other like female events as well. Like mm-hmm. I think Casey, Casey Brown in like a dark horse one. And there was another one in Canada. I can't remember what they're called, but yeah I think I'm, the last year I feel like it's been the year for like female mountain biking absolutely and yeah the more and, of it there is the more of it there will be like it's a compounding thing so it's really cool to see yeah it kind of all, you know just on that cusp of kicking off yeah yeah it's really motivating like when you see other girls like shred really hard there are so many sick like female mountain bikers and so it's just inspiring Absolutely. And it's like, it's motivating and inspiring for us dudes as well. Like just so cool to see other riders out there doing cool things and everyone, you know, having fun together. Yeah. It's awesome. Um, so I'm curious before you, before you go out for a ride and after you get back, do you have any kind of routine, um, that you do to kind of get yourself in the right mindset, the right state? Uh, yeah. Rush, rush to get, (laughs) rush to get ready to ride. Uh, and make sure you have okay face mask bike pass uh <laughs> helmet goggle yeah uh, i think i got it <laughs> um i feel like i'm always in a rush to like right. ride because I, I just want to spend as much time as possible riding great great um, answer though that's i like that so yeah get to the bike park as soon as possible so that you can spend more yeah. time there practicing yeah but then when you're there you, i can relax like when i'm riding i always just like i forget about everything else and I just focus on riding and I think that's why I love it so much as well because I'm I always <laughs> stress myself out for like no reason and then when I'm riding I'm like I'm just riding like yeah. nothing can bring me down nothing can like stress me so yeah I think we can yeah. all relate to that it's such a great release do you find kind of when you're you're rocking up at the bike park maybe after work you've had a stressful day and you may be ready to drop into your first trail. Is that is that stress gone instantly or does it take you a little while? Oh, uh, yeah, gone. Go. When I'm in the gondola, gone. As soon as you're in the gondola, wow. Yeah. Like a lady. yeah, no, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. So maybe when you've been riding, you've done a couple of warm-up laps and you get to maybe like a difficult feature um, that you're looking at for the first time, if there's any left for you in the bike park or some, other, some of the other zones you ride, what goes through your mind when you're standing up, up you know, above a difficult feature, thinking about riding it? Uh, there are definitely a few more that I need to take off in the bike park. And I think I try to, like, um, compare it to something that I've ridden before. Like, when I did that I, um, rock roll drop thing on, what's it called? Kill, Killer B? Yeah, Killer B. And I wanted to do it for a few years, but I felt like, mm, no, I'm not really there yet. And so that when I'm scared and I look at it, I just try to compare it to something similar that I've done before. And I'm like, okay, it's just like that one, but it looks different, Uh, but it'll be the same technique. Um, And then you can kind of relax and you're like, oh, I've done that and it's easy. So just do the same thing. Yeah. And once you kind of work out, you know, which technique you're going to use, is that kind of what you're focusing on or? Yeah. Um, I try, if I do a new feature or a new jump or whatever, I try not to think so much. Okay. Yeah. Uh, cause that's when you like, I'll, before I'll be like, okay, that's how I'm going to do it. And then I try to like, just shut my brain off and just do it. Um, cause otherwise I feel like I might just, when you think too much and you think too much about your technique, you might screw up. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's a common theme I hear from a lot of riders. Kind of once we've done all this training or all this practice, there comes a time when we kind of just need to let our mind turn off and let our body do what it knows. Yeah, exactly. It sounds like what you're saying there. Because it's a lot of like muscle memory, really. Yeah, if exactly. If I think, okay, it's like this other thing I've done. Uh, so yeah, just do like that. Or or I might think, 
oh you've done way scarier stuff than this before yeah um so and that was way higher like consequences if you'd crash so just do this <laughs> yeah no that's fantastic and what about kind of in the circumstance when you're standing at the top and you're, you're trying to kind of talk yourself into it so you know it's really similar it's not that scary but just not able to kind of convince yourself um would you write it anyway or would you kind of try something else and I think it depends if I'm writing alone I probably won't do it uh if I'm writing with someone I might do it if they push me to do it and if they if they believe I can do it and I'm like okay yeah and if I crash you can always call the ambulance <laughs> so whereas like if I'm alone and and sometimes I do new stuff like when I'm writing alone but only if I'm really confident doing it yeah. um whereas I just I would hate to like crash and you're just lying there alone in the woods and hoping someone's gonna find you (laughs) yeah not a nice feeling it definitely like adds another risk factor riding alone for sure yeah for sure but um yeah it's like i was saying before like if i don't feel like riding i won't ride and then i'm like if i don't feel like doing it i won't do it yeah i'm really very much like i do what i want to do (laughs) <laughs> that's a really good like, skill to cultivate as a mountain biker because I know often we are riding in a group and other people are doing things and maybe telling us that we can ride it. There does, uh, there is kind of that element of peer pressure sometimes, um, whether yeah. people kind of meet it in a, a mean way or just a, a well intentioned way. Um, there is yeah. kind of those, those outside influences. Um, so it's really nice to be able to kind of be strong enough to stand up for yourself and just say, hey, look, I'm not feeling it. I probably could ride it, but I'm not feeling it. I think that's super yeah important. But i think most people here they're like okay that's cool yeah if yep. you don't want to write it you don't want to write it so it's good to have a lot of really nice friends absolutely and the kind just... of writing bodies we need yeah that's great on that note um what's been one of your biggest challenges on the bike whether it's being kind of on the dirt jumper or on the mountain bike have you had any challenges mm, well i'm never really um content with my writing like I always like "Mm, no I can do better I can do better or I want to do better maybe I'm like I can't do better but I want it to look better so I think it's like a challenge to always like sometimes it's annoying you just want to ride and have fun but I keep thinking "Mm, it wasn't good enough write it better do it better (laughs) um so that's like a little bit of a challenge Um, Yes, it sounds like you're almost a bit of a perfectionist, which, you know, can be a great strength at times, um, but can also be a weakness at other times. Yeah. 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 Because then then you just like, it annoys you. Like, then you're writing like annoys you if you don't do it good enough. Like, I want to learn how to do a table and I feel like I keep practicing and I'm like, I'm just not doing it. I'm not even close. And it's, yeah. So it's a struggle when you just keep trying something and it's really not working and you know it's not working but yeah I think mm, sometimes it's just like someone can give you a little tip that really makes it click yeah absolutely. Um, and everyone has different tips and for the same like for the same thing but one person's advice might just be the one that like makes it click for you yeah um, I find that to be true on so many levels kind of when I'm out teaching people as well um you know i'll say one thing to one person they might really get it straight away and then i might have to explain it in you know three or four different ways to someone else to find the way that works for their mind um so that's a really good point you bring up about just asking like loads of different people like how do you approach this how do you do this and then kind of yeah. finding, finding the the technique that works for you yeah exactly that's right um cool cool I'm curious, what uh, what makes you passionate and what keeps you motivated when it comes to bikes? Well, it's just so fun. <laughs> yeah. so, and I just love having fun. So, yeah, every time I'm riding, I'm just like, yeah, happy, smiling. Um, and it's also social. Like, it, it keeps me really motivated to, well, to improve. And I always want to improve. And I always want to ride with, like, my friends so that's when I want to hang out with them so um otherwise like I'm like a little bit antisocial I don't really go to parties and stuff I don't think that's fun um it's funny you say that because my girlfriend kind of always gives me shit she's like all you do with your friends is ride 
And then it comes to like yeah. winter time and I see my friends far less in winter because we do far less riding, right? Yeah. Um, it's just kind of the way it is. And same as you, I'm like, why would I go to a party when I can ride? Exactly. And then if I've been riding all day, I'm like, I'm tired. I need to go <laughs> home and shower and go to bed. Yeah. And then wake up the next day and ride something else. So I think, I just think it's so fun and I never get sick of it. And so it is motivating because it's fun. No, that's and, great. And social. Do you think it's the learning and that constant kind of striving to get better that, that keeps it fun for you? Yeah, for sure. Uh, otherwise, if you just ride, like sometimes I just ride the same, like I'll ride the same trail and I'll ride it the same way and I get and I get kind of bored. I'm like, nah, I need to like learn how to do something else on this trail. So um, definitely need to like progress and get better or ride differently um that keeps it motivating for sure and yeah. riding different kind of bikes like i've had like a trail bike e-bike um mountain bike and dirt jumper in the last like three months wow. and it's been like really motivating to ride everything because there it's so different like if i ride my downhill bike in the bike park it's so different from riding like my dirt jumper on gorge road or going for like a scenic pedal on the e-bike and usually I go alone on the e-bike and I just kind of like cruise and or like pedaling to ride like a tech trail so it's just really different kinds of riding so having a lot of different bikes I think keeps you motivated to ride all of them yeah for sure do you find there's kind of parts from each discipline or each bike that you kind of or things that you can learn that you kind of bring over to one of the other bikes or one of the other disciplines yeah yeah for sure like uh, I felt like last year when I was riding Gorge Road, even like just the small jumps, um, I feel like I got like the whips a bit better on that on the small bike and on the small jumps. And then so that when I went to Winyard and did it on my downhill bike, it just clicked and I could do it way better. Wow, well, there you go. So yeah, it really helps. I think it's really good to ride like different kinds of like different um, bikes. Because then you bring all those skills like together. Yeah, yeah, that's um, a really good point. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, you're kind of talking about, you know, obviously if you're just to ride the same trail over and over again, you might get a little bit bored with that. I kind of talk to a lot of people who are doing that. They're riding, you know, the same black trail over and over again. And they're like, hey, like I want to progress. I want to keep it fun, but I just don't want to take on any more risk. You know, they're not looking to ride anything harder. Do you have any advice for, for people like that? on how they could find, you know, progression and fun without upping the risk level to a crazy level. Yeah. Well, like if you ride with someone different, like we were talking about before, how people inspire you, like I ride heaps, like blue trails are my favorite. And obviously that's nothing, it's not hard. Um, and then if you ride with someone different, they might do some, yeah, tire slide or a little one footer or whatever. And the risk of doing a one footer, like, well, there was one crash video of me. It was an accidental one footer, but oh, no. <laughs> it made me ride into the bank. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but that was not a one footer on purpose. <laughs> yeah, very, two very different off. things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, just ride with different people to get inspired to do something else on like the same trail. Yeah, that's or right. So kind trail. of experimenting on the easier trails without taking yeah. on a really hard trail. Or even watching just like, I, like I love watching Instagram edits, like iPhone edits, yeah. um, if they're good. There are a lot of bad ones. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and then that just inspires you, and you're like, oh, I didn't think that I could do like that. And then you like just try to learn something new on an easy trail still. Yeah, yeah, and, totally makes sense. Yeah. Um, and is that why blue trails are your favorite? Because you're able to kind of um, experiment and mix it up with your riding. Mm. Yeah, maybe. And mm, like, yeah, I think like blue flow trails would be my favorite. They're pretty fast. You can run really fast because they're easy. Um, they're usually like a fun size, fun size jumps, good size berms. And yeah, like I love Vertigo Skyline. It's really good. Yeah. Or Tutti Frutti and Morzine. And they're both blue flow trails and they're just so fun. 
yeah. I think they have a lot of fun berms. Maybe yeah. that's what I like. Yeah, great cornering practice and you got jumping and yeah. of everything, right? Um, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of blue flow trails as well. You can't beat them. No. Um, that's awesome. Um, I'm curious if you've ever been given any advice from a mentor, what's the best bit of advice a mentor gave you about mountain biking or about mindset? Mm. Well, I feel like I've probably gotten a lot of advice throughout the years, a lot of that I haven't really listened to. <laughs> but um yeah just like keep having fun with it I think like mm. just right to have fun um not really sure on that one no um, that's cool and, and why is it that you know some of that advice has been ignored do you kind of prefer to figure things out for yourself or yeah I like yeah, I don't like when people tell me what to do. So, Fair enough. <laughs> um, and which is like a, an advice is not someone telling you what to do, but it kind of is in a way. Um, and I do like advice. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Um, that's your opinion. And maybe I'll like think about it. Um, but then I just like learning how to ride a bike. I just ride all the time. So I'd rather... Mm, yeah well, I do I guess I do listen to advice like I remember this was like probably four years four years ago and I started riding a skyline and this guy was like oh try to like put your uh one foot down in like the flat corner and it'll make it easier and then I try to think about that and that really like helped my riding back then yeah awesome. and then lately oh, I don't know people Mm. No, you know I, I kind of totally hear what you're saying there you know everyone's got a bit of advice everyone's got something to say when it comes to mountain biking and probably learning any new skill um, and I guess like it's usually super well-intentioned um, but sometimes it can all just add up to like too much noise and it can't allow you to think for yourself or learn for yourself right yeah for sure I think it depends on like who tells like some people I'm just like I don't care what you're opinion, yeah like so. some some advice is coming from a completely kind of I guess, uneducated standpoint, right? Whereas yeah. then you might be at the Montreal camp working with some pro mountain bikers and some professional coaches. And it's like, okay, that advice is probably worth listening to. Yeah. We did get a lot of good advice there. Like Emerson, he was helping with like, um, I wanted to do a no foot can. I did do it on the airbag, but I don't know what it looked like. There's no like footage of it. Okay. And he, and he did give me advice then. So I do like advice for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, sometimes it can definitely be a bit too much. No, that's awesome. And I love the, the original point you brought up, just like don't forget to have fun. That's the whole point we go out there, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, speaking of advice, I know last season um, you were involved with some really cool how-to videos with the Queenstown Mountain Biking Club, um, kind of going over some of the technical skills of mountain biking, like drops and jumps and uh, riding techie routes and stuff like that. Um, I'm really curious if you were to make one this season on the mental side of things, what kind of advice would you want to include? Mm, well, we did have already like kind of talked about it a little bit, uh, what I would include, which would definitely be like, right to have fun. Always just do what, what you want to do. Um, if you don't want to do something, don't do it. And um yeah make sure you're inspired and set goals yeah absolutely that'd be a cool series right there <laughs> yeah i was gonna do some more but i uh my friend jacob who used to do them with me he moved back to sweden so i don't really oh, no. have a go-to videographer anymore okay yeah and can't do it alone yeah and then i've also the... been super busy this this summer yeah. mainly with work like uh last year was great because i only worked 30 hours a week so it was perfect like enough to make um money to like pay rent and save some and whatever and then still have enough time to like ride and do all the projects you want to do whereas yeah. this year it's been a little bit less like not bike riding time but less like project time yeah i hear you it's hard to fit it all in sometimes and, yeah you know still make time just to get out and have fun with your friends as well 
Yeah, exactly. But well, I'm gonna quit soon, and <laughs> then I have all the time to do what I want to do. No, I'm, I'm super stoked for you. I went, went through a similar thing last year, getting my residency over here in Canada. I had to kind of yeah. you know leave the black world for a little bit and go back to a real job to help get my residency. Um, yeah. And then eventually that came through after five or six months and I was able to quit and go back to bikes. So, <laughs> I tell you what, it's the best feeling in the world. Yeah. 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 I can't wait. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I'm sure this is kind of a bit of an open-ended question and I'm sure there's lots of things, um, but is there anything that writing has taught you? Whether it be kind of lessons that you take back into other areas of your life or lessons well, that you apply on the bike. Yeah. Like, it definitely has changed my life. Uh, I think it's just like, just, like, just have fun. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, I just keep coming back to this, but like, it's just fun. And, you know, life's not that serious. Just do whatever you want to. And so I'm definitely way more of a happier person now. I think it's also because like, you're active all the time. And I love being active um and you're active and still having fun you're not just like at the gym for an hour and then you feel good because you've worked out uh but then yeah you still have like too many hours left of the day to like yeah. think about stupid things that you shouldn't think about whereas if you go riding you ride for like five hours and you just had so much fun yeah um, that's so true and you're kind of exercising out there in nature under the sun yeah exactly yeah so uh, but yeah like my my mom actually messaged me like it was probably a month ago and she's like I just get so inspired by seeing all your posts and stories that it's like maybe it's not that important to like work and uh have heaps of money and own heaps of like nice things maybe it's just more important to like have fun and travel I'm like wow. yes my life is so much better now and I'm like you have to travel you have to do yeah. something Wow, it's so cool they're hearing so it stuck in from that, kind of someone yeah. else, especially in that older generation um, where yeah. the mindset was predominantly like work, make money, buy a house, this and that. Um, yeah. Hearing that you've inspired, um, inspired them just to kind of live a life full of more fun. Yeah, exactly. So I think that's just like what writing has taught me. Like yeah. just have fun, do whatever that's you want. Cool. And uh, yeah. If, uh, if your mom ever came to Queenstown and kind of picked up a bike for the first time, um, what's three things you'd tell her? Or three bits of advice you'd give her uh don't sit down on the seat yeah. <laughs> ever well then i have tried to coach some people and they always want to sit down i'm like don't sit down <laughs> yeah. but i guess it's when like people try to teach me how to ride a moto they're like yeah stand up i'm like nah, i'm gonna sit down <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> use the back brake no nah, i'm just gonna use the front brake <laughs> yeah it's funny kind of applying um, an outsider's perspective they're like oh sweet big squishy downhill bike like i can just sit down and go over anything yeah <laughs> maybe not yeah <laughs> <laughs> no so i think i tell her that mm, use both brakes not just like one especially not just the front one just and don't go down any black trails <laughs> <laughs> yeah especially not in queenstown good word of advice no yeah <laughs> that's awesome um so from from your perspective as a bike park rider and a dirt jump rider um what's the biggest obstacle that people face in achieving their riding goals what do you kind of see from the outside looking in uh i guess fear like yeah i guess a goal is something you want to achieve but you're not like you're not there yet because you're probably like scared to do it it's like a, at least for me, like I want to learn new tricks, but I'm like scared to crash, scared to hurt myself. Um, and I think it's like that for most people. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it doesn't common... just have to be, it doesn't have to be just like crashing. It might be like they're scared that they're going to humiliate themselves in front of other people or scared that uh, they're not going to make it and they'll be disappointed or something like that yeah yeah super common thing obviously in our sport and you know it comes from a good place again like our minds just trying to protect our body it's a pretty unnatural yeah. thing that we're doing kind of hurtling down a hill really fast on mountain bikes sometimes in the air um over ne really gnarly train so yeah certainly takes some working through um for, for some more than others yeah but i guess the only way to do it is just just do it and then you <laughs> when you've done it 
it's normal and then you you're not scared to do it again yeah for sure mm-hmm. and um you spoke kind of earlier a lot about kind of working up to things as well kind of you know yeah. breaking down a bigger goal maybe to ride the big you know the big jump line in a in a bike park or in a, a dirt jump set by maybe riding the small one lots first and then progressing to the medium one and so on yeah exactly there's like so much progression in queenstown now like you can ride mini dream and then when you've ridden mini dream you're like okay uh i know how to do this now so i could probably ride dream depending on how you ride it like some people maybe uh move up to like bigger jumps a bit too fast before they actually have the skill to do it but um yeah it's just good to like break down yeah bigger goal into small goals and then you'll be way more confident doing like your main goal yeah absolutely that's great advice um and i know i seen a a photo of you a while ago kind of hitting that first big jump on dreamline um oh yeah it's awesome congrats on that it's uh it's super rad um how are you going with dreamline you kind of got your sights set Uh, on yeah i've done it uh yeah i did hit the third one as well the other day um we were up there like on thursday or friday yeah, fantastic. and um i hadn't hit it in like quite a while i've hit it a few times this summer um but it was definitely before christmas and um i just ran into my friend and he's like oh i'm going up there tonight do you want to come i'm like well i guess so because i'm <laughs> off and it's good weather and good conditions so yeah let's go um and then I just rode like that first jump quite a few times until I felt like okay I'm not really scared of it anymore and then I was like okay I'll I'll do the third one and everyone's like yeah you can do it you just jump over it I'm like okay I just jumped over it Uh, (laughs) and I wasn't too scared to hit it um I just felt like it went a little bit fast I was like oh fuck I'm gonna tap my brakes uh, but then I forgot that the lip goes up and it's quite a big lip. So you lose speed when you go off it. And I was like, oh shit, it's kind of slow now. Uh, but I went off it anyway. I did, I did land a little bit on the side, um, but I didn't crash and I did do it. So that was cool. Wow. So good. And I was, but then I'm like, oh, I didn't ride it very good. So I'm going to go off and do it again. Cause otherwise I'll be scared to do it next time I'm here. Um, but then when I was at the top about to drop in, I could just like hear the noise from my tire and I didn't have a flat, but I probably had like five PSI oh, yeah. cause I think I must've rolled a tire when I landed. Yeah. Um, so thank God I didn't drop in Jeez, again. Super lucky. Yeah. But yeah, at least now I've done it. So I'm pretty keen to head up there soon again. Yeah. Cause it so wasn't cool. as, it definitely wasn't as scary anymore. I think that's going to be one like, of the, the hardest things as a rider, especially when you're doing jumps is just like, the brain wants to break the brain's always like yeah. oh, i got too fast i got too fast just not to break and it's like no why do you... you think like that like it's mm. way like you'd wouldn't you rather just land it like good instead of casing it and yeah. probably hurting yourself and your brain is like no nah, just have to break <laughs> i know the same thing happens to me every year like with slow bike park when it's like the first couple of runs down a line like you're just breaking way too much and you're casing every jump um, yeah. and the thing is like same thing with dreamline and with a lot of the jump trails in skyline down there is those trails have been built by like expert builders and they've been kind of buffed and made better and better over so many years that they've been built so that the speed's right you don't have to break yeah exactly um, but it's so hard to convince your brain yeah case, right? <laughs> well then hopefully you don't case it like too bad and then do it again and you know okay don't pretty much the brakes <laughs> exactly and then that kind of builds or touch, or so touch like, the brakes like yeah more speed was actually better was, equals more yeah. confidence yeah yeah uh, that's fantastic um so you're around kind of lots of rad riders down there in queenstown i'm curious do you have any riders that you look up to in the mountain bike world um well i look up to some of my friends like like Vinny Armstrong is that one of the sickest female riders out there, I reckon. And she's fa- uh, she's fast and she has style and she dares to jump like everything. Um, so it's really inspiring to ride with her. Awesome. Um, and yeah, just heaps of really good riders. Like you just run, you always ride with like the best. And so you just get inspired by pretty much everyone really. Yeah, it's yeah. a pretty cool scene, hey, being able to ride the same trails that the pros are there riding on, that they're there practicing on and just like seeing them yeah. on the chairlift. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But then definitely like the free riders because that's what I like doing. And, like 
I don't really care if you're a racer. Yeah, cool, whatever. I don't really care. <laughs> Not your thing. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> no, I've never been much of a racer myself. Um, it's more so about the fun side of it for me. Yeah. Cool. Um, so kind of shifting back gears a little bit to the days before COVID, um, I know you went on a really cool uh, road trip around Europe riding bikes. Um, do you have any good stories or anything you can share from that road trip? Oh, that was just like the best time ever. I had like five months off work here and went to Europe with my brother. We bought a van, like the big van, so that you can always have the bed up there and you can fit your bikes and then you can stand up in it. And we just like drove wherever we wanted to. And it was just so nice to have this like feeling of freedom. And you know, like, no, I don't have to work tomorrow and not the next day and not the next day and not the next day and not the next day. Like it is like, it was the best feeling ever um and like every day I was like oh what bike park do we want to ride today and that was yeah. like the question that's so great and you didn't feel bad if you had a day off just chilling at the lake because you know oh, I have so much like I have all summer off so it's definitely like best trip ever and I cannot wait to go to Europe again I'm so keen to travel like because now that was the summer before like 2019 yeah and right, so then, so just before and then COVID kind to, of hit. Yes. And then I went back to New Zealand and then I didn't get stuck here, but kind of like if I leave now, I can't come back. Yeah. Um, and it's been like that since like for the last two years. Um, like even if I went to Australia, I couldn't come back to New Zealand. Yeah. It's um, hard. Hey, on one hand, it's like, wow, what a wonderful place to be stuck. Yeah. Um, but so definitely like hand, it's, it's hard missing your family and stuff as well. Just, yeah. Like best place to be stuck for sure um but yeah I just really miss traveling and obviously I miss my friends and family as well but um it'd be cool to like just like go on holidays ride something else as well I think that keeps you inspired like traveling and riding new places mm. and meeting new people like in in France it was we were mainly in France when we were in Europe and you just met so many people every day um and then you they would come here as well like so I guess because when it's winter in Europe it's summer here and so and if you like love riding bikes you kind of like travel between like Europe and yeah Queenstown probably yeah endless summer that's the dream right yeah so I can't wait to live that life again I think I feel like I might be stuck here this winter again and I'm really not looking forward to it (laughs) but hopefully it's the last winter of my life (laughs) (laughs) I do like snowboarding and skiing as well but um yeah not as much as bike riding. A little bit the same. And I always say to people, like, snowboarding's fun while you're doing it, but what do you do afterwards? Yeah. <laughs> Apart from kind of yeah. sitting inside, being and it's cold, dark and cold. Everything's exactly. wet and musty, whereas biking, like, you can bike all day and then you can be down by the lake with your friends until like 11 at night. Yeah. And then do it all again the next day. Like, it's such a really Exactly. Paradise. Best sport ever. Yeah. So no one will <laughs> ever convince me that uh, winter is better than summer. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah. Same. <laughs> um, cool. What were some of your favorite spots that you hit on that road trip? um in europe or like favorite bike parts uh most of the time we were in morzine and i really like the um, uh, super morzine they had like a lot of like easy flow trails so the two to fruity trail that i was talking about is isn't super morzine and it's so fun it's just like burn 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 jump jump burn 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 <laughs> uh so it's super fun yeah. and uh it was called La Plenty is the also in Morzine it's just the the other lift there okay. and it's super fun as well quite like steep a lot of steep um like pirate trails there um we also went to down south in France it was just really nice to drive down um to southern France because it's so different from the Alps so a really good drive and then what's the bike park called there evo bike park i think okay. it's called yeah, yeah. it's like um so they do shuttles there so you have to book shuttles there's no lift um and then there are quite a lot of flow trails i'm pretty sure when i was there i couldn't really ride the i don't know if it was black jump trail or i couldn't really ride that very well because i back then i hadn't been riding for that long so um I definitely wasn't as good as I am now, uh, but I still had fun. Heaps of stuff yeah, yeah. to ride. And then heaps of progression as well when you're off every day. Like, mm. 
Yeah, it's a good point you bring in up. The zone. It's like it's super cool kind of looking back on, you know, rides. And I look back to like um when I met you in Queenstown there and we were kind of doing a bit of riding in that crew together. Um and looking back on like, you know, where we were then and then where we are now. It's, yeah. um yeah, it gives you a good feeling, doesn't it? Being like, wow, I've progressed a lot since then. And, yeah, it's you know, life's so still different. Still a lot to go as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as you kind of traveled around there in Europe, going from, you know, different bike park to different bike park, you mentioned it was a little bit different down in the south of France. Um, yeah. I'm, cu- I'm curious kind of how you approach, you know, turning up to a new trail zone or a new bike park when things are a little bit different. Maybe the dirt's different, the terrain's different. Um, how do you approach that? Well, like, it doesn't matter if I ride a new trail, I'll always like ride it slow and check out the features. Um and then you can just hear if someone comes behind you, just pull out to the side and they can ride past you. But I'll never just like just do something. Like I'll always look at it before I try a feature, unless like I can see the land and I can see it like, oh yeah, it's, it's easy. Uh, but I think that gives you confidence to um, ride the trail really good the next lap. Just like check it out, right? Like so that you know what's coming up. Um, some people might just be like a little bit too keen and they'll just like, oh, I'll just hit this jump or whatever. And then they don't realize, oh, shit, I'm not actually meant to land there. And they just. Yeah. Um, so I always like kind of like ride it slow and make sure like, you know, where all the features are. Um, and that really gives you confidence to ride a good the next lap. Yeah, and then you can sure. just have way more fun or just following someone who's done it before. Um, I'm a pretty social person, so it's pretty easy for me to start talking to anyone really. Yeah. Um, that's the best thing about and asking for advice. Yeah. The mountain bike community as a whole, Hey, like no one's, well, there's not many kind of grumpy people out there that don't want to talk to you. Like usually everyone's like super happy to tow you down a new trail or, or give you some advice. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, was it, was the dirt any different, like going from New Zealand to Europe? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, it was definitely different. It was pretty dry when, we, like, it didn't rain much last summer we were in Europe, so it was pretty dry there. Okay. And I'm used to riding, like, pretty dry dirt here in Queensland as well. Okay. Um, but the trails are different. Like, I feel like the Cornet Peak track here in Queenstown is very, like, European. Okay. Um, don't know how to explain it, really, but um, I guess the trails in Europe are more open, like, in the open. Okay, Whereas yeah. a, a skyline is in the woods and it's very dark mm. and um, definitely different, but I like, I like all of it. So yeah. Yeah. That's half the fun of it, isn't it? It's kind of changing and yeah. adapt in and, and sussing out new places. Yeah. Uh, that's great. But it wasn't gonna... really like, a, yeah. Sorry. What were you it was say? just fun to ride something. It was just fun to ride like a uh, different train. I reckon mm. like it yeah. wasn't necessarily a challenge or yeah. 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 No, Even awesome. in New Zealand, like the dirt in Queensland is so different from like whenever in Dunedin and Christchurch, um, there's a bike race in Dunedin right now and it's raining and I'm like, oh, I would not want to ride in Dunedin when it's raining because it's yeah. so slippy. Like you don't even, if you just turn on, oh, you crashed. <laughs> like, yeah, no, I, I like hear ice. you, but that's lethal in some parts of New Zealand. Yeah. Um, I know I, I spent a lot of time riding in the North Island, like around Rotorua and the places yeah. around there and that dirt when it rains is just like this slippery mud that kind of coats all the roots um yeah, it's treacherous slippery. yeah we were there in august and it was awesome. raining not too much but a little bit yeah and yeah it was pretty slippy <laughs> that's a that's a magical spot though isn't it so many nice yeah so in cool forest. yeah no, that's awesome i'm going to be respectful of your time here i know you've got um something else to get off to you're doing a, a photo shoot on the bike after this is that right yeah not on the bike this is just like to help a friend out okay or, cool um, yeah 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 that's awesome so, what's going on well, before... always something going on like i was saying <laughs> yeah yeah no that's great um before we wrap up wrap up i'd love to ask you what's the biggest takeaway you hope listeners take from this conversation my biggest takeaway <laughs> oh like for for listeners so like we've talked about lots of different advice yeah um, if like like you could like piece it all together into like one takeaway or one bit of advice. Oh, okay. Okay. I was just thinking about food when you said take <laughs> I'm pretty hungry. <laughs> Me too. Um, well, just keep having fun on your bike. Really, like that's what everyone should do. Like that's why you should ride bikes. Um, just have fun. And then yeah. that'll make you a really good rider. Yeah. 
I love it. Yeah. Follow what's fun and then learning and everything else will come from that, right? Yeah. Like I've always just written because I think it's fun. And I think that's really helped me like become better and also like um, making a sort of like not a career, but, you know, getting into that. Um, yeah. Whereas like a lot of people are just like, I just want to be a sponsored writer. And I'm like, I don't think that's like a good, you shouldn't think like that. You should just write to have fun. Yeah, no, that's then, a really good point. And then that might happen if you want that to happen. It'll just happen. Yeah, I kind of talk a lot with my clients about like um, task orientation versus um, ego orientation and yeah. kind of a goal like that. Like I want to be a sponsored writer. Like it's very much like a goal we've got for our ego. So I think it would be cool. It'd yeah. Be cool or whatever, but in actually getting there, it's going to be really hard to get there unless we focus on the task. So like the yeah, task exactly. of getting like, better I think as a writer like kids- or having more fun. Yeah, a lot of kids are just like, oh, I just want to be sponsored writer. It's like, yeah. don't think like that. You should ride your bike to have fun. And yeah, then- <laughs> and then maybe the sponsorship will come as a result if you have yeah. enough fun and do it. Yeah, yeah. And I think kids that do just ride for fun, like then they just become really good riders. Yeah, for sure. Because they're the kids that and are out there probably- doing like, you know, 100 wheelies every night after school. And then they're the kids that yeah. can wheelie around the block with their eyes closed yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, I still can't really. <laughs> yeah, you know me either. I'm still working on it, and it's I kind of well, remind I myself like a, <laughs> um, just how many you need to do. You to learn when you're a kid. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. I just don't have patience for that. I'm like that. It's so like we kind of neglect as adult riders, isn't it? We'll kind of go out for a ride, and we might spend five hours on our ride, but we're climbing up, riding down, but we're not just in the parking lot, kind of doing jibs and doing wheelies nah. and <laughs> practicing things. Yeah, uh, so there's a lot to learn from that. Um, cool. Did you have anything else you wanted to throw in here or, or mention um, before we kind of wrap things up? Oh, probably I could talk about stuff all day, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. any cool projects coming up or anything you wanted to mention? Um, I don't, I haven't actually got that many projects, projects this summer. I do yeah. have a really cool idea. Maybe it's going to happen. Maybe not. Okay. Uh, it's a really cool video. It's a really good idea. So I hope, I'll make that work. All right. Well, you're um, going to do it now. <laughs> yeah. Before, before uh, winter's here. Yeah. And then, and yeah, now that I've said it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then I hope, um, well, yeah, there's like a cool collection coming out soon with Lewis Riders. Okay. Yeah. Um, maybe like a signature collection. One. So oh, that's, that's great. pretty yeah, cool. Yeah. So um, you're going to have like really your own like being... jerseys and things like that? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. uh, I don't know if that's a secret, but you know, I'm just taking it <laughs> uh, I think the collection should be out soon. So that's right. Uh, I'm really stoked on that because I just, I want to, well, I've always been a really creative person. Yeah. And I want to write in like what I want to wear. Right. So um, do you get to have some part in the kind of creative process of it? Yeah. 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 So I've worked with Lewis Riders to create like some, uh, yeah, signature jerseys. Uh, oh, so that's so really cool. I'm looking forward to that being released. Yeah. How long have you and, been writing um, for Loose Riders now? Uh, like two years. That's awesome. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think, um, yeah, around two years now. So it's great. Like they're just like the best and they always help me out with everything I need. Like yeah. whatever I need, I can have yeah. it, which is cool. Super And right. I like Sounds their like clothes. They're really cool. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Do you have any other kind of brand partners or sponsors that you wanted to mention before we wrap up here? Yeah, uh, this year I'm supported also by Daily. They just sent me like a massive package, which was oh, pretty cool. I just awesome. posted this photo of my heart tail. It looks tim. Makes me want to ride it way more oh, yeah. when it looks good. And I keep getting compliments on it. So that's really nice. It's good to have companies like wanting to support me and believe in what I do. And yeah. like, yeah, I don't really do, like I just do races for fun and whatever. And I'm, I guess I'm more of a like, instagram on a biker <laughs> is what i'd call it like but i think that's creative like i love making edits yeah, and no it's cool and it, it does it provides value to the industry as well yeah hmm. and yeah i'm working with yeti new zealand this year as well so oh, awesome. waiting for my e-bike to come I'm really excited say, for that a, to come that's a pretty like, good partner just, to have on board yeah yeah it's like best bike ever i've ridden my um yeti 165 so that's an a trail bike but it's set up as a downhill bike yeah awesome. and every time i ride it i'm just like mind blown how good it is yeah the other day i was like oh my god my bike's so good and that <laughs> also 
that is, gives me so much confidence. Like, if, I don't think if I didn't have that bike, I wouldn't like uh, try to ride Dream. I'd be like, no, 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 my bike's not good enough. Like, I don't trust my bike. Whereas this bike, I'm like, I love it. It's just like good. I trust it. And yeah, that really gives me like confidence to do stuff. So yeah, life's too short for shitty bikes. <laughs> Bye, <laughs> yeah. Yeti. I love it. I was going to ask you if you had a motto, but I think that's it right there. <laughs> yeah. That, that's fantastic. Okay. I'm going to let you go here. Um, before you go though, where can people find you and follow along with your adventures online? I'm mainly active on Instagram and uh, I'm Mermaider on there. So okay. it's M-M-U-R-M-I-D-E-R. It comes from, um, everyone asked me where it comes from. So I might mention that as well. Um, it's from like a really good TV show called Metalocalypse. It's about a death metal band. Uh, that like rule the world it's really good i'd recommend everyone to watch it especially if you like metal and there's a song about mermaid murder and it's called mermaid <laughs> then that's where i got my right that's a good from. that's a good story i actually had no idea myself where that came from <laughs> so yeah i think i think most people don't know where it's from but yeah yeah no that's great and um yeah i'll put links to uh to your socials there in the show notes yeah for anyone listening. yeah mainly um, that but i want to start a youtube channel i'm not there yet but hopefully in the future that's another pro- project that i want to work on yeah but that's a super cool idea as well yeah could Look be fun to seeing that one in action entertaining yeah. yeah 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 for sure um fantastic well again thank you so much um for taking the time today um to sit down with me um i know i've learned a lot from this conversation it's really been really cool to kind of hear just how centered you are on fun for mountain biking yeah. and that, <laughs> what that's kind of provided you in terms of growth over yeah. the last few years as well it's so rad um so yeah keep up the good work um keep posting fun content and i look forward to kind of following along myself online thank you it's good to chat with you yeah we should catch up more often <laughs> <laughs> yeah well we should do another one next season and kind of see where you're at there i'd love that yeah sounds good yeah awesome okay have a good rest of your day catch you later thank you you too yeah, bye, bye.